Gracie, that ends another broadcast. Now say good night to everybody. Oh, good night. George, take me home and I'll fix you a nice turkey sandwich that was left over from Thanksgiving. Have you still got any white meat left? This turkey was all white meat. How can a turkey be all white meat? Well, if they push Thanksgiving a week ahead on you, you turn white too. <laughs> Well, we're off the air. Oh, oh fine. No, 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 no. Uh, quiet, no, no, no. boys. Quiet. Quiet. I'm talking to the production man. Hey, Wayne, how was the show? Well, it seemed like a good air show, but I thought the audience was a little slow. Slow? I thought they were a great audience. I thought they were rude. Rude? Yeah, every time I said something, they laughed at me. <laughs> well, I don't know. I thought they were great. Well, you should. They didn't laugh at you. <laughs> well, I'll find out for myself. Wayne, is the record of our broadcast ready? Yep. Well, play it back, will you? Stand by, everybody. Okay, sound man. From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hornell and Spam. Right at your house with Burns and Allen. So listen closely. And you know something? You'll have no trouble getting your family up in the morning if you just take this tip. Open a can of Spam, cut off a few slices of this tender, tasty meat, and fry quickly in a hot pan. That delightful, rich aroma will bring the sleepy heads to the table on the run. Because Spam tastes so good and is so easy to use, it's a breakfast favorite in thousands of homes today. You like Spam's mouth-watering flavor. It's juicy, extra goodness. Tired appetites wake up in a hurry when Spam is sizzling in the pan. Serve Spam and Eggs, America's modern breakfast. Be sure to tell your food dealer you want S-P-A-M Spam. Get a can or two when you shop tomorrow. Sound man, what happened? Mr. Burns, you'll have to get a new needle. You know, a needle only lasts eight months. <laughs> well, uh, how much does a new needle cost? Ten cents. Have this one sharpened. <laughs> well, come on, everybody. Uh, we're going to rehearse next week's program. No, I'm not going to do it. No, not me. I've got to go down to Bullock. I bought some open-toed shoes, and I've got to return them. Gracie, you can return the open-toed shoes tomorrow. No, I've got to return them now on account of my toenails are painted red. What's that got to do with it? Well, every time I walk down the street, it looks like a bunch of carrots hanging out of a birdcage. <laughs> well, Gracie, first we're going to rehearse next week's show. Oh. Well... Uh, you won't need me anymore, will you, Mr. Burns? Well, stick around. And, uh, by the way, Jack, you played the part of the messenger boy in tonight's show swell. Thanks very much. And, uh, you know, you weren't a real messenger boy, so you can give me back that quarter tip I gave you. Okay. And here's the string. <laughs> Well, now, let's see. What do we do next week? Hey, George. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Artie. Can I have my check now? Your check? Yeah, well, after rehearsal. I want my check now. I've got to take it to the bank. Well, why do you have to take it to the bank? It's too small to go by itself. <laughs> well, here's your check, wise guy. Thanks a million. And here's your check, bud. Thanks a million. And, Samuel Lee, here's your check. Thanks a dollar ten. <laughs> Quiet, and Gracie, here's your check. Thanks a mi- Oh, wait a minute. This is an insult. $3,000 is an insult? Well, look what it says on the check. Gracie Allen, $3,000 and no cents. <laughs> she gets a check for $3,000 and she's insulted. 
You know, Gracie, that's a neat little figure. Oh, I know, and I'm pretty, too. <laughs> well, never mind. We've got to rehearse next week's broadcast. Now, let's see. What George, is... I've got a swell idea for next week's show. It's a play where boy meets girl, girl meets boy, boy meets girl's father, girl meets boy's father, father meets father, father meets mother. But You're... all I've heard so far is a lot of meats. Well, George, this is the spam program, and spam is a perfect combination of choice. <laughs> well, I guess I'm a naughty boy. Wait, I've got an idea. Next week, we can do a typical Hollywood program with picture stars, the Brown Baby Restaurant, autograph seekers. Autograph seekers? What's that? What's that? Gracie, who are the people who are always on the outside and can't seem to get in? The Republicans. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant, yes. Look, George, why don't we do a kitty program next week? I've got a cute little poem. Well, let's hear it. Okay. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, it's a nice little kitty program. And, Artie, I've got a TL for you and that Senor Lee. When we were on the air a few minutes ago, I had one joke in the whole show, and you guys killed it by talking in on it. Why didn't you wait for my laugh? What? The Mr. Crosby show? <laughs> Crosby isn't on until Thursday. That's right. <laughs> Artie, tell that musician to stop with those wisecracks, and that goes to that whole broken-down band of yours, too. Broken-down band, huh? It happens to be a symphony. Yeah? Well, it may seem funny to you, but it doesn't seem funny to me. And wait for it. <laughs> And that's without an audience. See, George, I figured something out. Next week, let's do a Jack Benny type of show. A Jack Benny? Yeah, you know. That's the fellow who plays those small parts in the Rochester pictures. <laughs> Oh, yes. You mean Hillard's brother-in-law? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Freddie Allen Straightman. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Now, um, I can play the part of Mary Livingston. Yes. And, uh, Artie Shaw can play the orchestra leader, Phil Harris. Well, then he'll have to wave his hair. No. No, he's got a baton. Oh, he can wave that yeah. instead. Oh, yeah. uh, let's see. Senor Lee can be Rochester. How can Senor Lee be Rochester? Yes. Yeah. Oh, too tall. Yeah, huh? he's a little too tall, yeah. Now, let me see. We need somebody to play Don Wilson. Let's see. Buddy Houston and his movies can do that. Yes, that's a nice fat part, yes. And now, uh, let's see. The only thing left is to get somebody as funny and clever as Jack Benny, and you're the only one left. Yes. So I guess we can't do that show. I thought so. <laughs> Hey, Smoothies, Babs, what number are you, Charlie, and Little going to sing next week? Whispering. Well, let's hear it, huh? All right. Whispering while you cuddle me. Whispering so no one can hear me. Each little whisper seems to cheer me. I know it's true, there's no one dear but you. You're whispering while you'll never leave me. Whispering while you'll never grieve me. Whisper and say that you believe me. Whispering that I love you. Whispering why you never will leave me. You never will greet me Whisper Tell me that you love me Or swear it By the stars above me I love you I love you I'm whispering that I love you That was great, kids. They'll love it next week. Thanks, Mr. Burns. Good night. Good night, Babs. Good night, Charlie. Good night. Good night, little. Good night. Hey, George, which one of the smoothies is Babs married to, Charlie or Little? That's silly. Haven't you noticed that Little is the one who always holds her hand, helps around with the coat, and opens the door for her? Oh, I see. She's married to Charlie, huh? <laughs> well, anyway, um, listen, everybody. I thought of a great idea for a new show. Hey, Jack. Jack Norton, come here. Yes? Uh, Jack, do you know how to do a drunk? Can I do a drunk? <laughs> I used to have that in the corner. And I was minding my own business, oh. and a fella comes up to Okay, me. Jack. Okay, Jack. <laughs> well, 
Jack, you've got the part. It pays twelve fifty a week and all the span you can eat. Yeah. Now, let's see. Uh, we're going to do a restaurant scene, and I play a wise cracking owner. And Gracie, you're a waitress. My sister Betsy used to be a waitress. I know she was a waitress. She got yeah. cross-eyed from watching the clock and looking under the place at the same time. <laughs> Well, all right, Gracie, I'd like to start. Now, um, this is a restaurant. Where are the tables? There are no tables. Well, where are the chairs? There are no chairs. There's no customers. There's no nothing. Uh, business is bad, huh? Yeah, business is bad, yes. <laughs> well, anyway, this drunk comes in, and he wants a cup of coffee. But and... there are no tables? No. And he sits down. There are no chairs? No, no, there's no chairs. And he's drunk, huh? <laughs> well, anyway, when the drunk comes in and he asks for a cup of coffee, you holler, boss, boss. Uh-huh. And that's where I rush in and do my funny stuff, you see? Uh-huh. Now, Jack, you go outside and open the door, and sound man, you let him in. Okay, let's start. Mr. Burns. Yes, sound man. I'm sorry I can't stay for rehearsal. Why? You see, a group of world-famous explorers who were in my class at Harvard are waiting for me to take them down to the Union Depot. Yes. One of them discovered the North Pole, one of them discovered the South Pole. Uh, sound man, uh, why do you have to take them down to the Union Depot? Well, that's the only way they can find the place. <laughs> Well, you're staying right here. Now, come on, let's start. And don't forget, Gracie, when the drunk comes in, he hollers, boss, boss, I rush in and I do my funny stuff. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Say, miss, I beg your pardon. Could I have a cup of coffee, please? <laughs> did, did you say coffee? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Gracie. What kind of acting is that? Why so weak? Well, if you think I'm weak, you ought to taste the coffee. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, Gracie, when he says, miss, I'd like a cup of coffee, put your personality into it. Well, maybe he doesn't like it sweet. <laughs> now let's start all over again. But Come George, on. I don't want to butt in, but if you want to make your restaurant a success, why don't you do what we do at home? What's that, bud? Uh, well, for Thanksgiving, we always stuff a turkey with spam, and it's a delicious thing. You, you stuff a, a turkey with spam? Well, sure. We might as well give the turkey something to be thankful for, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. Come on, let's get started. Now don't forget, Casey, when he comes in and he says he wants a cup of coffee, you holler, boss, boss, then yeah. I rush in and I do my pro- funny stuff. Yes, yes, okay, I Okay, Jack, let's stop. <laughs> Oh, say, miss, I beg your pardon. Could I have a cup of coffee? With or without cream? What's the difference? Five cents. <laughs> well, come on, let's try it again. Uh, Senor Burns, as a director, you're a regular Caesar B. Schlemiel. <laughs> you mean the mill. Schlemiel means I'm a dope. Absolutely correct. <laughs> correct? Yes. And now do you want to try it for $32? Take it or leave it? <laughs> Marty, what are you going to do with that guitar player? He just called me a dope. Look, George, don't get excited. He's a foreigner. He just repeats what everybody else says. <laughs> yeah? Well, you can stop with those wise cracks, too. Look, guess what my drummer says to me every time you tell a joke. Marty, that isn't funny. Absolutely correct. <laughs> correct? Yep. Now, do you want to try it for $65, $64? Take it or leave it. No, don't take it. Take it, take it, take it. Oh, quiet. Quiet, everybody. <laughs> Same miss. I beg you, oh, pardon me, pardon me, Jack. Yes, yes, Jack. It's this. I know. I forgot all about it. It's a sketch. Try it again. All right. Oh, say, Miss, I beg your pardon. Could I have a cup of coffee? Well, Gracie, why don't you answer him? I'm watching a customer play a slot machine. <laughs> there's no customer and there's no slot machine. Who hit the jackpot? I thought so, yes. <laughs> jackpot. I must be crazy. Absolutely correct. Give the man $64. Oh, quiet. Go ahead, Jack. Start again. Say, miss, pardon me, but could I have a cup of coffee? Well, I'm sorry, sir. You have to wait a minute. I'm folding napkins. Folding? <laughs> folding napkins? Oh, I love to fold napkins in the cot of I used to be a baby's nurse. <laughs> Jack, let's start again. Hey, miss... I beg your pardon. Could I have a cup of coffee? Well, you'll have to wait. The boss is busy. He'll bring you coffee in a few minutes. Chase the sandwich? They're chasing the cook. <laughs> Gracie, look, uh, I'm going to cut your part down just a little bit. When the drunk comes in and says he wants a cup of coffee... Yes? You say nothing. I come right in and I do my funny stuff without you. Go ahead, Jack. Let's go. Uh, pardon me, miss. May I use your telephone? <laughs> What's that? You're supposed to be drunk. What about the coffee? I don't need the coffee. This thing took so long, I got sober. You did, huh? Well, <laughs> uh, never mind. Forget the sketch. Artie, what are you going to play next week? 
I'm going to play What Is There to Say. Well, all right, play it. I'm going into the control room and hear it. number was very good. But your fourth violinist wasn't playing. Well, he doesn't have to. He's my brother-in-law. <laughs> well, good night, Artie. Good night, George. Good night. George, say, I've got a little idea I'd like to try for next week. Yeah, but, uh, well, but what is it? Well, you see, George, people all over the country are singing the praises of Spam. Yes. And that's what gave me this idea. Now, look, I've fixed up this little ditty for the Spam Glee Club. Glee Club? Yeah, you and me, Senor Lee and the sound man. And look, I'll, I'll start right here. Hey, where's that? No, got an F there? Me, 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 You like Spam, you bet you will, sir. 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 You like Then, George, I'll say now everybody is singing the praises of Spam, the most popular new meat item brought out in a generation, a meat whose popularity is founded on flavor, a flavor folks really get hungry for. Hormel discovered this new combination of meats, a new and better way to season it, a handier package to put it in. Spam, S-P-A-M, is a combination of pork shoulder meat, sometimes called picnic by you women, and ham meat. There's the difference. The difference? Yes, George. Hormel uses the pork shoulder to make Spam sweet and juicy. Then the ham it takes to give Spam that extra goodness and flavor. That's why Spam really does taste better, fried, served cold, or baked. To make sure you always get this extra goodness, Spam tells you right on the label, pork shoulder meat with ham meat added. Look for that sentence. Try Spam tomorrow. 
Just be sure you say to your food dealer, I want Spam. Say, that's swell, bud. But then we have the tag, the smoothie singer. Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot. Spam hits the spot. Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, that's okay, bud. We'll do it next week. Good night, bud. Oh, good night, Gracie. And say, you were positively terrific when we did tonight's broadcast. <laughs> good night, senor bud. Oh, good night, senor Lee. You were very funny on tonight's show. Good night, bud. Good night. <laughs> is a wise guy. Well, so long, everybody. So long, senor. So long, senor. I uh, certainly enjoyed the bread crust tonight. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks, kid. Uh, I've got a date tonight with a girl from Earl Carroll's Bonitis. <laughs> Bonitis? Bonitis, she's with me. Bonitis with Artie Shaw. Okay, Bonitis. okay. Good night, senor. Mr. Bird. Yes, sir, man. Do you mind if I leave now? Oh, not at all, Hobbit. I suppose you're going out to take your scientific friends down to the depot? Yes, we're going down to meet the honor man of our graduating class. Is that so? Yes, you see, our classmate, Frederick Hinsdale, delivered the valedictory address. He won the Harvard-Yale debate and won first place in the international oratorical contest. I see, and uh, he's arriving tonight, huh? Oh, no, no. No? Then why are you going down to the Union Depot to meet him? He works there. He's the train announcer. <laughs> Good night, sound man. <coughs> Well, Gracie, here we are alone. Yes. Well, oh, memories, memories. Gracie, what does this empty theater remind you of? Oh, the first time I saw you on the stage in Altoona. <laughs> Don't remind me of that. Remember the first act we did? Yes, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was a long, long time ago. Yes, even before Roosevelt. <laughs> Remember we did a routine where I said to you, Gracie, you're dizzy? Yes, and I said, I'm glad I'm dizzy. Boys like dizzy girls, and I like boys. Yeah. What you'd say, and you'd never stop. That really used to drive me crazy. Well, I'm glad it's over. Yes, I'm glad that you're glad it's over. Yeah, and I'm glad that you're glad that I'm glad it's over. And I'm glad that you're glad that I'm glad that you're glad it's over. You know, Gracie, you're still dizzy? Yeah, I'm glad I'm dizzy. <laughs> I'm glad you're glad you're dizzy, and let's stop. Well, I'm glad I'm dizzy because boys like dizzy. Quiet! Quiet! Quiet. Quiet. <laughs> ah, those were the good old days. Remember, Gracie, the first time I asked you to go to dinner? Oh, I'll always remember that. I didn't have a quarter. But you still took me to dinner. Do you, do you know why? Sure, I had the quarter. <laughs> We had flapjacks and coffee for ten cents. Remember those flapjacks? How can I forget them? They're still flapping. <laughs> Remember, Gracie, we were both trying to get jobs. One week, one week I wouldn't eat. And then next week I'd get a job. <laughs> yeah, I can remember now how I used to tell everybody that someday I'd be a big comedian. But they all laughed at me. Oh, they're not laughing at you now. <laughs> It seems like yesterday when Lester Hamill, my agent, said, George, get yourself a dumb dame and go into Bordeaux. But you got me instead. <laughs> yes, and we started small, but I knew someday we'd get an opportunity. Remember we played the Myrtle Theater in Brooklyn? Oh, sure. Then we went to the Hill Street Theater in North. Mm-hmm. Then Polize, New Haven. Mm-hmm. Then the Gem in Philadelphia. Yeah, the Bijou in Schenectady. Oh, sure, time. I remember that. We did it all in two weeks. Yeah, well, we were younger then. We could walk faster. <laughs> Remember, Gracie, in those days we used to work for peanuts. Yes. And now you're working for Spam. Is that better than money? I think so. <laughs> Will you ever forget the day when we got a wire from Eddie Darling saying that we're booked into the Palace Theater in New York on Broadway? Oh, George, that really was a thrill. I'll say it was. I can see it now. The opening day. We were standing in the wings, frightened to death. The orchestra started to play our number. We were petrified. We couldn't move. Eddie Cantor pushed us on the stage. Have you saw the roses in the garden? Have you saw? Gracie, what kind of grammar is that? Who told you that that ain't high class grammar? Who told me? Yeah. I seen it in a in a book where I live at. Oh. Say, so whom teaches you to speak the proper language? Whom teach me? Yes. Why, I can learn you how it should be spoken. Oh. Well, I suppose you got your knowledge? Yeah, up at Vassa College. Uh, I think them colleges are a joke. You do, huh? I know how to use the English language, and I don't use no adverb for no noun. But can you learn me how to parse a comma? Oh, sure. Don't that grammar make you proud? 
Ain't it fair some people don't know nothing? Oh, sure. For adjectives, they use the plural cue. Them words is hard to use, but there's much worse, sir. Ah, but they don't travel, I and you. Now we dance. lump to dee to lum to dee dee da da lum to dee 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 Stop. Gracie, do you like me? Oh, sure, Harry. <laughs> Harry? My name is George. Oh, I keep thinking this is Tuesday. Music. Lump to dee 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 da 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 Stop. George, my sister just had a new baby. Boy or girl? Well, I don't know, and I'm dying to get home and find out whether I'm an uncle or an aunt. <laughs> Stop. You know, a very funny thing happened to my mother in Cleveland. Oh, I thought you were born in Chicago. <laughs> Music! But they, they don't, don't stop lying you. That's the finish. They, they don't, don't stop lying you. Well, Gracie, there'll never be a palace theater again. No, I don't think so. Here, help me out with my coat, please. Hey, you are. Come on, let's go. Miss Allen. Oh, good night, doll man. Good night, Mr. Burns. Good night, Frank. Wait a minute, I'll give you some change. Uh, not some change here. Uh, Gracie, have you got a quarter? Hmm, same old George. <laughs> want to make your meal planning easier? Listening to George and Gracie each week, you've no doubt promised yourself you'd try Spam soon. If you haven't yet tried Spam, you're really missing something. Spam is the most popular meat item brought out in a long time. Thousands and thousands of families now use it regularly. Join them. Try Spam tomorrow. Use the recipes on the label. Ask for S-P-A-M Spam when you shop and discover the easy way to serve good food. Driver, turn right on the next corner. Gracie, remember the Apollo Theater in Boonton, New Jersey? Yes. Remember the ventriloquist? Oh, with that cute little dummy on his knee. What was his name? Uh, Edgar Bergen. Oh, okay. Whatever became of him? <laughs> he's, uh, he's selling coffee. Oh, couldn't get anywhere in show business, huh? <laughs> you know, Gracie, you're still dizzy? Yeah, I'm glad I'm dizzy. Boys like dizzy. Quiet, quiet! Quiet! Out. Join us again next week, same time, same station, for another Burns and Allen show with Artie Shaw and his orchestra and the smoothies. This is Bud Heaston speaking for the Hormel Company, reminding you to remember that cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? Even those who think they don't like chili do like Chili Con Carne the way Hormel makes it because it's different and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.